do a 500 mile review on this 2018 Softail Slim. And I'm going to try to break it down in a few categories. We're going to go with aesthetics, we're going to go with the powertrain, and then we're just going to go with the overall handling and what I think about the bike. So first off on this 2018, it is aesthetically, I think, a beautiful bike. It is designed after the World War II bobber. They have done a really good job of keeping the DNA of that in this bike, but giving it updated uh, appearance and uh, some basically some new high-tech uh, features, which are pretty cool. Some of them I'm going to go over right now. We got the 7-inch LED Daymaker Halo headlight that comes stock on the bike. We have the analog digital tack and speedometer that comes stock on the bike. We have a USB port under the uh, tank for charging cell phones or any other electronic devices that you need. The bike has a 25 and a half inch standover height, which is the lowest of the Harley bunch. So if you're a shorter rider like me, I'm 5'7", it is very easy to straddle this thing and get a solid plant on the ground where you don't feel like you're gonna tip over. Uh, the bike fits me perfectly. We have a five gallon tank. I am averaging about 42, 44 miles to the gallon, which is uh, pretty close to what Harley says, which is nice. So I get about 200 miles before I have to stop and get gas. And frankly, after about 200 miles, you're ready for a break anyway and to stretch your legs. So let's, let's go to the motor. We are talking the new Milwaukee 8. V, uh, v twin 107 cubic inch which equals out to about almost 1800 cc's at 110 pounds of torque at 3000 rpms so milwaukee 8 why is it called the milwaukee 8 well because we have four valves per cylinder instead of two which gives us a total of eight valves it is a single cam motor where the twin uh, twin cam was obvious it had two and also this motor is counterbalanced, dual counterbalanced, so it runs a lot smoother, a lot less vibration. There's still vibration, but not nearly as much as there was. It also has an oil cooler installed on the front of the frame because the heads are oil cooled. So it makes the bike run cooler also, less heat, less wear. This engine really does run cooler and smoother than any other Harley engine. Also, it is a performer. It really is. At the 107 cubic inch, I feel for what I ride this bike for, which is highway riding, around town, stuff like this, you know, back country roads cruising 40, 50 miles an hour, this bike has all of the power that I need and then some really don't need any more power whatsoever but they do offer this in a 114 i believe that comes in the fat bob the heritage uh the fat boy there's a couple that the 114 comes stock in well not stock but a, a, an extra and you know just like i said but for what I, the kind of riding that i do i mean really for anybody the 107 is more than sufficient uh, they claim this is a 10% increase 0 to 60 over the twin cam and I believe this bike really gets up and moves uh, the only downside to the Milwaukee 8 is it's not a proven engine yet this is the second year that it's been out uh, first year in the soft tail models last year was just in the during models so it's really not a proven engine yet but from what I can tell and what I've written on it, I don't see why that it shouldn't be. Also, it does run five quarts of oil instead of four like the twin cam. And that is because of the oil cooling. More oil to help cool the motor down. Uh, very smooth. This bike is hard, hard mounted in the frame. No more uh, rubber mounts. The dual counterbalancers in the motor. Uh, the vibration is at a minimum. Like I said, you know that it's there. You know you're riding a Harley but it is not what it used to be at all. It is a belt drive, six speed transmission. Uh, just for reference, at about 70, 80 miles an hour on the expressway in six gear, I'm tacking about 2,500 RPMs. Twist of the throttle, you get that instant 110 pounds of torque and you are gone. 
uh, the bike really does perform well. Harley has done an amazing job on the redesign of these motorcycles. So let's go to the chassis. The chassis, soft tail chassis, mono shock. Uh, completely redesigned from the old soft tail frames. They are stiffer, they are about 30 pounds lighter, and I believe they have like 20 less moving parts than the old frame. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I can tell you this bike handles fantastic. You can really tell the difference. There are three types of mono shocks. They are uh, located under the seat. One is an external dampener where you can externally dampen your shock. One is a micro dampener under the seat. And this particular one that I have on this motorcycle is a wrench. You actually use, they give you a wrench, you set the preload to a number and you are good to go. All three are very easy to use. They have raised the footboards up. They have increased the, the lean angle on these. And I can tell you, I have yet to scrape a floorboard on this bike. I have yet to do it. When I rode the 17, the old style Street Bob last or Softail Slim, sorry, last year, I wasn't out of the dealer parking lot three minutes and scraped the floorboard. But I have yet to scrape the floorboard on this bike, and the bike handles like a dream. It is a very well balanced bike. It goes into corners very easily, and it stays in the corners very easily. Uh, the bike does not feel at all what it weighs. This bike is, I believe, right around 700 pounds. But believe me, it's not, doesn't feel anywhere even close to that while you're riding. Very nimble bike, very easy to ride. Now, with that being said, this is not a beginner's bike. I would not recommend this to somebody that has never ridden before because it is a bigger bike. It's heavier, it's, it's powerful, and it can get away from you. Uh, if you're a first time rider, I would suggest something more along the, the Sportster line, something to get on a little lighter bike, a little easier to ride. Not that this is hard to ride at all, it is a very easy bike to ride, but it is powerful and for a new rider that could be intimidating. And just the size of the bike itself. What else? We have the braking on this bike is more than sufficient. I have the ABS on this one, it's a $795 option. Uh, I believe you have a four pin caliper on the front and a two pin on the back. Feels just right to me. Uh, the braking is very predictable. It's very consistent. You have nice uh, feedback from your levers. The braking is more than sufficient and works just fine. No problems whatsoever with getting this bad boy stopped. Now with the ABS, if you guys do wrench on your bike, it's a little bit of an issue uh, because technically they're supposed to be hooked up to a computer to make sure that you do not have any uh, air bubbles in your system so it works properly. You've got your standard mirrors on the bike that you can actually see out of thanks to these Hollywood bars. But as you guys can tell, I'm a pretty big fan of this bike. It is probably the best motorcycle I've ever owned. And there's just, as of right now, there's just not a lot that I want to do to it because the damn thing is just so perfect the way that it sets. Harley's done a great job with these new soft tail lines. I was one of the guys out there bashing them when they did it. Uh, I was very upset that the Dyna line disappeared, but uh, I stuck my foot in my mouth because they have done a fantastic job redesigning this motorcycle and bringing it up to date. Well guys, that is about all that I have today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let me waste your time as usual. If you like the video, please give me that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, smash that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. And ding, that little bell. That would be cool too. But like always guys, ride safe and be careful out there. And until next time, later.